Run it back, Philly. No fraud, no fanboys, no intros. Run it back, nation. What is good? Ah. It is your boy DJ Eastwood, running back Philly, no frauds, no fanboys, no intros, Algo Gang dude, think give me 500 likes on the video, subscribe to the channel, turn your notification bell on. If you want the Sixers to be trying to do something before training camp starts, hit the like button. And go to runitbackphillyshop.com, get the Trust Issues t-shirt that represents all of us who trusted the process and were left with nothing but Trust Issues. What the fuck is going on anymore, man? All right, let's talk about it. A rumor is here, and it is just that, a rumor on Twitter. But I want to tell you why it makes sense. I mean, when you see something like this, okay, NBA trade report, but sources, Joel Embiid's camp has become putting pressure has begun putting pressure on Philadelphia's front office to improve the roster before the start of the regular season. 76ers continue to look for a trade partner for James Harden. This isn't too far-fetched because Joel Embiid sitting back another offseason looking at the dysfunction that's going around and then he starts to see other teams make moves. Other teams make significant moves. Milwaukee Bucks, one of them. Not that the Sixers had any chance in, had a snowball's chance in hell or, or a prostitute's chance in church uh, of getting Damian Lillard. But he's sitting back watching all of these other teams make significant moves to improve their championship odds. And once again, he's at home watching Woj on TV and nobody's saying anything about the Sixers making a move to get better. So I do believe, I do believe that Joel Embiid is frustrated. And I do believe that Joel Embiid's camp is probably putting pressure on the Sixers to improve the team before the start of the regular season. I 100% I believe that. Sixers are in a bind that they were in before Daryl Morey got here. Daryl Morey has figured out some way to make it worse. And Joel Embiid is starting to get frustrated. I 100% believe that. And he should be frustrated. He should be putting pressure on the front office. You know what? And I've said this before. I've said it a million times. Joel Embiid's been too damn nice his whole career. Joel Embiid should have been putting pressure on the 76ers front office year one when Ben Simmons wouldn't shoot the damn basketball. He should have said, hey, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? Get me a point guard that can spread the floor and give me the space I need. Or, well, like, what the fuck is going on? Or I'm going to tell him to his face. He didn't tell him to his face. Because Joel Embiid's too nice of a guy. He's a big teddy bear. You know what I mean? Five years he supported Ben Simmons not shooting a basketball. And then all it took was one guy who's not afraid to be the bad guy in the room, Jimmy Butler, <laughs> he was here for six months and said, yeah, nah, this ain't going to work. You either get rid of this guy, get rid of this guy, or I'm out of here. And you know what the Sixers uh, ultimately ended up doing with that. And Joel Embiid should have been more pissed off and mean after that went down because him and Jimmy Butler probably could have won a championship. So is Joel Embiid finally getting to the point where he's saying, all right, man, listen, I'm about to turn 30. And you guys are still fucking up. You guys are still shitting the bed. He made the comment this offseason about, I don't know if it's going to be in Philly or somewhere else, but I want to be in the finals. I want to try to win a championship. And now this offseason plays out the way it's played out, which is with the Sixers doing absolutely nothing. James Harden in, 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 in limbo. Daryl Morey sitting back eating crumble cookies, smiling and laughing, trolling on the internet. Yeah, I believe Joel Embiid's probably pretty frustrated. And I hope he's putting pressure on the Sixers' front office to get something done before the season starts. But now we need to talk about what can they actually do? Do you guys understand how screwed the Sixers are right now? Do you have any idea? There's hardly any fanboys left, by the way. I want you to know that. 
I've been saying this team is screwed for the last maybe five years. And then something would happen and I'd get excited again. They traded Ben for James Harden. I fell for that bullshit and got excited again. But I've been saying this team's screwed for a long time. And in the beginning, there were still a lot of fanboys left. They were like, listen, if you don't, you just go root for another team if all you're going to do is trash your own team and blah, blah, blah. All these cheerleaders with their Sixers pom poms on the sideline. The fanboy nation of this team is diminishing slowly because, first of all, the Fairweather fans are gone. They, they don't want to watch this shit. They went back to, you know, the Eagles and football and uh, hockey and baseball, whatever else. I'm not saying being a Fairweather fan is a bad thing. I'm a Fairweather Phillies fan. You know what I mean? I wish I was a Fairweather Sixers fan. I wouldn't be this frustrated all the time. But anyway, the fanboys are diminishing because it's what I've been saying for a couple of years now just keeps becoming more and more and more true. I think the Sixers are ultimately screwed in the situation, and let me tell you why. I think, and I thought just 24 hours ago that this was possible, that the Sixers' only way out of the situation that they are in is to trade James Harden to L.A., have L.A. send assets to uh, Portland, and Portland send Drew Holiday to the Sixers. But now I think the Clippers probably want Drew Holiday more than they want James Harden. And you also have this. The starting price to acquire Drew Holiday will likely be two first-round picks. See, I was looking at it like, you know, and I was naive or I was jumping the gun a little bit, and I was looking at it like uh, Portland just wants to move off of Drew Holiday's contract, so that means they're going to take whatever anybody sends them. That's not, why would they do that? Idiot, Eastwood, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? They know Drew Holiday's value. Yeah, they want to get off of his contract, but they're going to try to get the most assets they can for him. And the starting price to acquire Drew Holiday will likely be two first-round picks per Jared Weiss NBA. The price for Holiday likely starts at two first-round picks, but several teams in the mix have the means and motivation to go beyond that. And I would say just off the top of my head, the Philadelphia 76ers are probably like number five on that list, if even. They don't have the assets to do that. Miami has the assets to do that. The Clippers have the assets to do that. The Brooklyn Nets have the assets to do that. The Boston Celtics have the assets to do that. The 76ers do not have the assets to do that. And the main problem is that James Harden is not as much of an asset as everybody wants to think. I've been saying it all summer. Uh, I've had people coming at me also. Oh yeah. 11 time all-star former MVP, something, something else. And you think, you think nobody wants him. You think nobody wants him. You think he has no value. You have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) James Harden, unfortunately is not the asset that ever, that his fanboys think that he is. He's not the asset that Daryl Morey thinks that he is. And I, I, I'm starting to think James Harden is not going to land you Drew Holiday. As a matter of fact, one of James Harden's favorite places to party, Miami, <laughs> has zero trade interest in James Harden. The Miami Heat have zero trade interest in James Harden. Zero! Listen, he yeah, he averaged 20 and 11 last year. But it's the antics, it's the lack of dedication, it's the quitting, it's the forcing trades, it's all of these things that everyone's like, "You know what? No, I'm out. I'm out on that, bro. I'm out on that." He's 33 and he's a problem for an organization for requested three trades in 4 years. He's a he's been a problem now for 4 years. Why would we want to take on a potential problem who is aging and declining? This is this is common sense. The Miami Heat say, nah, we're not even interested at all. Do we think we could win a championship with James Harden, Jimmy Butler, Bam out of bio? Maybe five years ago. You understand what I'm saying? 
Miami doesn't even want him, man. How are we going to sit here and hope that the Clippers want him? Who wants him? What if nobody wants him? Nobody trades anything for him. Daryl doesn't make a move at all. James sits out. Then when he's a free agent, China offers him the most money and he plays for the Shanghai Sharks next year. That is absolutely, that is actually not that far-fetched. If you really think about it. So let's recap. The Sixers are screwed. Joel Embiid is now putting pressure on the organization to make something happen before this season starts. The Sixers probably can't make anything happen before this season starts. James is not coming back. Joel's going to request a trade. The process is done. <laughs> Listen, man. The past couple of years, I tried to be kind of positive. I would say how negative I am on this organization and this team, and then I would say, but here's how we can be positive. Here's what might happen that might be positive. I'm getting to the point where I'm not seeing really any positives at all. I'm here for entertainment only. I'm excited to watch Tyrese Maxey this season. I'm excited to see what Nick Nurse can can change about what this team looked like last year. But as far as a team that can win an NBA championship or a team that can get to the NBA Finals or even the Eastern Conference Finals, I don't have really uh, anything good to say. Y'all be good, man. I'm out. Peace.